Hello and welcome to learn ADS in five minutes. This is tutorial 37 on S parameter analysis of active circuits. What you will learn in next few minutes, how to set up an S parameter simulation for active circuits, performing common measurements such as stability, uh, minimum noise figure impedance, simultaneous match impedance, noise figure, etc. And then plot gain circle, noise circles and so on during this tutorial. Before we start, subscribe to my channel. Once you subscribe, click on the bell icon to enable all the notification so that you are always updated about the new tutorial posts. Don't forget to hit the like button once you watch the video and click on share button to share it with your friends and colleagues. Now let's get started understanding each of these things which designer need to do while uh, you, you know, performing design using active components such as transistors. So in ADS now I'm using the same device which we talked about during last tutorial. It's a FET uh, device in which uh, you know, we performed DCIV characteristics simulation in the last tutorial. And now based on those parameters, uh, just for as a matter of convenience, I picked up gate bias voltage of one volt or minus one volt and a drain bias of three volts. Now, one thing which we need to you know, take care of while using device, you know, active devices under S parameter simulation, even if we are only characterizing the device to start with in order to get some basic idea about you know, what kind of gain can be offered, whether the device is stable in the region we want to operate and so on, it's a good idea always to use uh, ideal DC block and ideal DC feed uh, so that these components don't load your active device and any characteristics or any performance parameter you see is actually only from the device, not including the effect of these components. However, as you go along in the design process, you can always replace it with capacitor and the DC feed could be replaced by inductor or choke as may be needed. Now here I have set up a very simple simulation with 50 ohm reference impedance on the either side of the transistor and running simulation from one to 10 gigahertz in a step of one gigahertz. So nothing is special in setting up an S parameter, you know, simulation like we usually do. After simulation, we can look at dB of S21, S11 and S22 or using a rectangular plot by inserting those plots from here and also plot the reflection coefficient um, that means S11 and S22 on a Smith chart. This gives us a first cut idea about how the device is behaving, what kind of maximum gain we can expect from the device over various frequencies and so on. Here notice, um, you know, the device and most often all high frequency RF microwave devices would be unstable, you know, in some frequency range. And here we can see uh, at certain frequency, we are going out of a Smith chart and that indicates a negative you know, kind of resistance or negative impedance offered by the device, which can be very, uh, you know, easily seen here. So it, it gives an idea that device is unstable at around lower frequencies, causing the negative impedance. Now, while placing markers on a Smith chart, you know, traditionally, so let me delete this marker and try placing a new marker on a Smith chart. Now, whenever you place a marker on Smith chart, when you look at impedance, usually that's normalized with Z0 parameter. And if you want to see exact impedance over various frequencies, we can always double click on this readout. Under format, uh, we can choose what Z0 we want to use as a reference. So usually in RF microwave, it's kind of 50 ohm. However, there are other options which are available. If you want to put your own custom, you can put it there or you can type in your own impedance such as 100 ohm and now this marker will get scaled as per the 100 ohm impedance. So in this case, I will go ahead and pick 50 ohm and now I can read the you know impedance when I you know shift the marker over various frequency points. We can note the impedance uh, correctly shown with reference to 50 ohm. Now this is how we set up a regular you know, S parameter simulation. Now using the simulation S parameter library template, we do have various measurements which we can perform. And for example, if we would look at the maximum gain, uh, we can place this maximum gain, you know, computation. 
and it's an equation which uh, basically is calling a function max underscore gain and then it's operating on s matrix as you can see where the capital is now anything you want to call here and say my max gain you can you can give the with the parameter whatever name you want and when we run simulation these measurements will be available so let's go ahead and create a new page and now i can insert a table or a rectangular plot and then select my max gain parameter which i just place on schematic and now at various frequencies i can see what's the maximum available gain for this particular device similarly we have all common measurements available here for example if i am interested in looking at simultaneous conjugate match impedance at the input i can place this smz1 component and again it is calling a function smz1 working on this parameter and port z1 is basically the impedance of your first termination so if you are using a standard 50 ohm you can also type in 50 ohm here but if you leave it like this it will automatically pick whatever impedance you specify here similarly there are other parameters here uh, z in is basically input impedance um, you know and now you can see it's only referring to s11 because we are just wanting to see what's the impedance looking into the amplifier and again port z1 referring to input port now if you want to use the same thing for output port uh, you can either use the other measurement function here or simply you know change it to s22 and make it to port z2 and now it will look from the output side the impedance looking inwards from the output side so this is how you could do some common measurements and once you are ready once you run simulation all these data could be available in the table we plot so this is simultaneous impedance this is input impedance and then you could just go ahead and expand your um, you know uh, table according to what you are looking at all right now uh, finally uh, whenever we deal with active devices and we just saw our uh, measurement is indicating so let's go ahead and delete this table and go to the first page here we are seeing there is some instability so if you want to do stability measurement there are multiple options here we can either use the mu or mu prime method which are basically geometrically derived stability you know calculations and either one of them is sufficient necessary in sufficient condition to check the stability of my device as long as they are greater than 1 that the circuit or the device would be stable otherwise we can use a classical method of roulette stability factor and in the more commonly in theory we refer to as k so stability factor should be greater than 1 and stability measure should be greater than 0 so with these two combined we get necessary and sufficient condition for our device to be stable Now, if you want more information, once you double-click on the measurement, you click on Help. It will open up various documentation, and here you can read about, you know, the formula used, and you can also talk refer to what is the necessary and sufficient condition uh, for achieving the stability. And also, it will provide the reference. So in this case, you can see it's referring to Gonzales's book, and uh, which got published in you know nineteen ninety-seven, and that's where the formula is coming from. now once we have the stability parameters in place and we go ahead and run simulation let's go to the next page and here uh, we can plot a stability factor stability measure and also the mu and mu prime and you can see whether it's mu prime or mu they are all less than 1 indicating in stability also if we look at the stability factor it's less than 1 and the stability measure is uh, less than 0 in certain frequency range so all of, all of these stability criteria is converging to a pretty uniform understanding of how this whole thing is is changing now if you want to measure the noise parameter or the noise figure of the device under s parameter controller from the noise tab i can switch on calculate noise and rest of the thing can be left blank if you are only dealing with you know kind of two port network we go ahead and run simulation and now uh, let me delete some of these plots so from the available list of measurements nf2 is your actual noise figure 
uh, because this is a noise figure at port two. And F1 is noise figure at port one, which is basically due to the reverse uh, propagation. There's no practical reason why we, we need to see an F1. And F2 is always the noise figure we want to look at. So here the ray trace is showing you the noise figure of the device versus frequency. And this blue trace is NF minimum. And this NF minimum is basically the minimum noise figure possible uh, from this device versus frequency. And if you're designing an LNA, you would like to bring this NF2 as close as possible to NF minimum to achieve the best noise figure possible. However, you need to you know, manage uh, between having a good input return loss plus the noise figure. So we'll talk about some of those in future tutorials when we go into LNA circuit design. For now, this is this is what we need. Now, finally, as a last um, you know point in tutorial, if you want to do certain gain circle or noise circle, we can use these circle um, you know definitions. So, for example, I can look at available gain, and the syntax here is kind of very simple. And again, you can click on help to open the help example to understand the exact syntax or the parameters to be passed to this function. However, here it's pretty simple. S matrix uh, is what a gain circle function will use. And here we can define the gain which we want to look at. For example, if I want 10 dB or 12 dB gain circle, I can enter that. And 51 is the number of points which it will use to construct the circle. So it's a very, very simple syntax. And similarly, if you want to see a constant noise circle, we can enter noise circle. NF2 is the noise figure which you just calculated. And then these are the noise parameter which um, you know it will obtain by running uh, the, the device analysis. So once we have these two things in place, we go ahead and run simulation. And now we can insert a new Smith chart. And then when we plot uh, you know, either a gain circle or a noise circle. So here we can see multiple noise circle one uh, circle at every frequency. And if we double click on this trace, we select line color. We can see uh, you know, different colors, one color representing one frequency. And again, we can insert a legend on this plot and we can see you know, different colors are corresponding to different frequencies. Uh, similarly, we can put another Smith chart and insert a noise circle. A noise circle will be only one circle at every frequency again. And again, pretty similar to what we did earlier, we can select line color. And at various frequencies, you can see the noise circle. And as you can notice, the noise um, you know, figure is changing versus frequency. And that's why you have different you know, frequency point. Now, in case you need to plot multiple gain circles uh, for what multiple gain targets, for example, here, uh, if I want to see gain circles over various dB points, so I can put a curly brace and I can enter the required you know, gain parameter. Let's say I want to go to, you know, from 10 to 13 in a one dB step uh, point, And I want to see all the gain circles corresponding to this gain. Now, in order to make it easier to understand, I will go ahead and change the frequency from a sweep to single point. Otherwise it will be you know, four circles because we are looking at four gain stages at every frequency. So right now I'm just going to go and select five gigahertz, you know, just no matter of preference, just something. And now you can notice uh, four, you know, gain circle here, 10 dB, 11 dB, 12 and 13 dB at five gigahertz. If we go back to the frequency sweep mode, like what we were doing earlier, now for every frequency, we will have four gain circle to 10, into 440 gain circles will be produced. And that's why I switched to you know, uh, one frequency earlier. So now you have 40 gain circles, uh, four circle at every frequency. So hopefully this tutorial was of some help to you. If you want to use this parameter with active devices or active circuits, hope uh, you know, know your job is much easier now after watching this tutorial feel free to, to subscribe to my channel and stay tuned for future tutorials um, going deeper into active devices and circuits. Thanks a lot for your time and attention.